What might men dislike the most if they were to become women? Not being taken seriously. When you call attention to it, you're being bitchy. Being assumed to be ignorant about a subject you have expertise in. Being infantilized. Your hobbies and interests, if feminine coded, will be seen as lesser. Even when you take up a masculine hobby, you will be constantly questioned. You won't be listened to because people assume you don't have any clue what you're talking about. Your concerns will be seen as minimal or lesser. You will be seen as nagging when you bring up a real concern. You bring it up again and again and nothing. You will be ignored and dismissed by doctors. You'll feel very small in this world. Reply about your you feel very small in the world thing. It reminded me of an interaction I had with some people. Once, I was hanging out with a group of guys who I thought I was great friends with. We knew each other for years, we went to school together, we talked about our problems and complained about our parents, we introduced each other to our favorite hobbies and interests, and I thought we were inseparable. Once, we were talking about something unimportant, a casual, relaxed conversation about nothing. And one of them started to compliment everyone else, talking about what he liked best about all of us. One of the boys was smart and thoughtful, the other was funny and had the coolest interests, and I was pretty. He said I was really pretty. I don't think I've ever felt worse about myself, lol. After everything I told these guys, all the stuff we did together, after introducing them to my favorite music, my favorite films, my favorite games, after I helped one of them through low-key suicidal ideation, all I was to them was a nice thing to look at. I stopped being friends with those dudes some time later, and now I look back at it and see that they didn't treat me as well as I thought they did. They commented on my weight, made fun of my hobbies, asked me when my boobs were going to grow in, and other crude teenage boy stuff. But I still think the you're really pretty comment is the smallest any guy has ever made me feel, and I hope that it is never dethroned. Lull. Story 2. I once went to a gay bar in a dress. While waiting at the bar for a drink, someone passed behind me and placed both hands on my hips as they did. This has never once happened to me while dressed as a dude. If you're a guy and you do this to women femmes, cut that shit out immediately. Edit. I've never had a comment blow up like this, so I guess I should respond to the more prominent replies. First of all, shit. Secondly, thank you everyone for sharing your experiences. While the original question was about men experiencing life as women, it seems universal that anybody of any gender identity can be both a perpetrator or a victim of unwanted physical contact and sexual assault. We should all use this information to be more mindful of how we treat and touch others. Third, if you shared an experience that was essentially, I'm a guy and this happened to me, and I kind of liked it, so it wasn't a big deal, I'll say that your feelings are valid but also not helpful to the overall discussion of how to treat each other more respectfully. An isolated incident is much different from the systematic sexualization most women face for most of their lives. Fourthly, I absolutely in no way want to compare wearing a dress in a gay bar to the experiences women face on a daily basis. The sole intent of my original comment is to point out that this has never happened to me while presenting masculine and only happens to me when I present feminine. I'm only extrapolating that life as a cis woman would be like this constantly, and the vast majority of replies seem to support that. Fifth, in a loud bar or concert or similar setting, I'm going to say a light tap on the shoulder and an excuse me is acceptable. Don't cup or grab or even use the whole hand. This is only my personal opinion. Overall, regardless of your gender identity, none of us should be presuming it's all right to touch anyone else without their consent. And if you do, and you upset someone, take responsibility, apologize sincerely, and learn from the experience. None of us are angels or saints, but how you respond to growth opportunities like this is how your character is defined. Story number three. Trans man here, I've lived as both a man and a woman in my adult life. A couple of things. Women don't get taken very seriously in a lot of aspects, especially in certain subcultures. I grew up in the American South, and there was always still a lot of, oh, sweetie, type patronization that I just haven't experienced as a man. I think a lot of men would be wholly unprepared for it. Not that every man is always taken seriously, but a lot of men I've known are generally used to being at least listened to when they've had a complaint or something, for instance, at work. Secondly, 
Women are also expected to be pleasing and accommodating and not raise a fuss or be rude. A great example I have is when I was working, living as a woman, as a vet tech in a very rural place. I was up front with two other technicians, a man and a woman, when a client came in the door. He was an old man who we all recognized, and he would talk a lot, just about the good old days and folks he used to know and all that, every time he was in, and we were busy. He came up and started chatting with all of us, and about 30 seconds later, my male coworker just kind of waved and walked away. The woman and I, bound by our upbringings, felt compelled to stand there going, oh wow, that's so interesting, for the next hour, while trying to gently steer the conversation towards us leaving and getting back to work. But if we had done the same thing as he did, it would have been rude, and we definitely would have been scolded. Lastly, but really in the same vein as the previous bullet point, there's a lot of difficulty if you want to be direct about something as a woman. When I lived as a woman, I'd hear from my husband, you need to march on down into your boss's offices and tell him this is how it has to be, you can't do X and Y and more, that's not okay. He didn't seem to understand that the reaction to pretty much any woman doing that is immediately going to be, ugh, what a bitch. And nobody will ever listen to the rest. Even if you're making a good point, it doesn't matter. Those are just some things that come to mind. For what it's worth, living as a man does come with some unique challenges too. Story number four. ITT men's responses to what it's like to be a woman, not knowing how bad it actually is. The worst thing about being a woman is the patriarchy and women being inherently expected to cater basically in every aspect to men. At home, we are expected to do literally everything. When children come, we are expected to do everything. Even at work, we have to act like men to get ahead. People saying periods, bras, and catcalling just do, not get it. Reply. Yep, and even when women do try to act more masculine at work, it's like walking a tightrope. Only it's not a rope, it's a string. Being aggressive is overlooked for guys. Women who do it are bitches. Try to take charge of a team in chaos, even though you don't have the title to do so? A dude is showing leadership. A woman is overstepping. Men get promoted on their potential. Women have to do work a level above their title before they get the promotion and the raise that comes with it. Even trying to talk sports. A guy does it, and it's normal. A woman tries it, even if she is passionate about sports and she's trying too hard. Bosses will just assume you don't want the challenging assignments or business travel and just pick a guy and tell you later. All that, and then yeah, when you get home, you're expected to do all the cooking, cleaning, remembering if you need butter or laundry detergent. Planning vacations becomes your job. Buying gifts for the holidays? Also on you. You'll be lucky to get a robe. Deciding if you need a cleaner plumber handyman will be your job. And picking them. And scheduling. Oh, and by the way, trying to smooth things over when anyone is upset is also going to be your job. Far worse after kids come. There's an automatic default if you're exclusively breastfeeding, but soon it's mom's job to do everything. The baby takes the bottle from you better. The baby calms down faster if you go soothe them, and I've got a morning meeting again. I don't know how to do all this laundry without shrinking everything. Oh wait. Kids grow, what size clothes, shoes do they wear? I can't remember. They need to see doctors on the regular. Who can keep track? Who is their pediatrician? And the dentist? For baby teeth? Kids go to eye doctors too? W yeah. You have to plan outfits for spirit days at school? I'm lucky if I remember what grade they are in. And I'm supposed to care about their teacher's name or their favorite subject? No way. You're supposed to bring a gift to their friend's birthday party? And wrap it? And remember the date and location? Insanity. What the fuck? Sorry, channeling my dad and guy friends fly acquaintances before all their respective divorces. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's story, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more incredible Reddit tales. Share your thoughts or your own experiences in the comments below. I love hearing from you all. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring those amazing stories.